Dak Prescott has become the, the most underrated, under-respected, under-appreciated quarterback in all of football, and it's not even close. Well, thanks for watching Numbskull News. And today, talking some more about Dak Prescott, more about uh, all these lists people have him on as far as where he falls in their ranking of quarterbacks coming into the year. Um... Most people have them around 17, 15, 14, or even lower, depending on, I guess, you know, your intelligence quotient <laughs> that they have. Um, I know the big ones, Pro Football Focus, has them at 17, uh, saying that basically he has to have a whole bunch of crap around him because without a ton of talent, he's just going to suck. And. I mean, we'll see about all that, but I think just given what he's done, given what he's done so far in the league, the amount of wins, fourth quarter comebacks, game-winning drives, um, I think he's worth a hell of a lot more than that. So I did my own list, and I just did the top ten, because to me, uh, top ten quarterbacks can help lead you to a championship. And a lot of them that are top ten quarterbacks right now already have at least one ring. Number one, of course, it has to be Tom Brady. If you see any list that doesn't have Tom Brady number one, they're ridiculous. He's number one until he's dead or he decides to retire. Uh, Drew Brees, he's number two. Same thing, until he retires or he's dead, he's, he's number two. Or there's just, you know, some kind of injury or uh, Peyton Manning episode, because he started to slow down a little bit last year, but I'm still giving him number two just because he's been right there for God, last decade. So I'm not moving him out of that spot. You know, Aaron Rodgers had a bit of a down year last year. To me, still number three right now. And I wouldn't be shocked at all if he, you know, ends up leading the league in about every statistical category known to man. He'll probably be a little pissed and, you know, want to recapture what, how everybody felt about him. He wants everyone to see him as like just the greatest, you know, God in a helmet throwing a football. That's what that's, that's how he wants to be viewed. So I think he's really going to push for the numbers this year. Uh, Russell Wilson, you know, uh, you know, uh, not unlike Dak, he was pretty much a bus driver at the beginning of his career. Had a great defense. The offense was uh, predicated on the run game. Marshawn Lynch, great, fantastic back. And then when he was up for his money, they had a lot of let a lot of people go. And then we had to really see, what okay, what, what does Russell Westbrook have? Well, he's an elite quarterback, man. He's been killing it with not much of an offensive line, not much of a run game. Uh, last year, the defense was actually pretty good. You know, a bunch of young kids, a lot of no names on that defense, but, you know, they weren't bad. And Russell Wilson's the catalyst now for that team, and he is he's elite. Big Ben, uh, it's a little begrudging for, begrudgingly for me being a Dallas Cowboy fan to put the Steelers guy number five, but he deserves it, you know. Um, he's had to deal with Antonio Brown for a while. Antonio Brown, as we all see on Hard Knocks, is just a handful to deal with. And uh, he's getting it done with Juju. Um, you got James Conner in place of Le'Veon Bell, but... I don't think it's going to matter. This dude can throw the ball. He's just, he's that good. He's Big Ben. I don't know how much longer he's got, but for right now, he's still a top five guy. Number six, Matt Ryan. Um, I think it's a little bit by default. He's even that high. Uh, I know a lot of people are really high on Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan's got a lot of talent around him. You know, he, he's got, now he's talented enough to take advantage of the talent, but for the most of his career, I think Atlanta should be a lot better than they are. And I know he's had a lot of competition. You know, you got Cam Newton and Carolina in his division, uh, Drew Brees in the Saints. So it's been a rough division. It's going to be a rough division again this year. But uh, I would expect a little bit more from a Matt Ryan. But, you know, I got to give him full respect. He's well within the top 10. Number seven, Phillip Rivers. I mean, there's just no question. This old dog still gets it done. Um, now, he hasn't had a lot of postseason success. I think he had one trip to the AFC, AFC Championship game. But that was a long time ago. The AFC is incredibly tough to win because of the Patriots. 
they they <laughs> they're, it's like trying to go through Michael Jordan. You know, it's just ridiculous. Now at number eight, I had Andrew Luck. Of course, he just retired, shocked everybody. Um, so of course, everybody underneath moves up. So number eight, Jared Goff. Uh, not a very exciting quarterback. Ton of weapons around him. Great offensive line. Great defense. Great coaches. Um, a lot of the same things you can say about Dak Prescott, you know. Now, Goff may put up a few more higher numbers, you know, a little more yards per game. Uh, he may have a few more touchdowns, but uh, again, you I mean, you got a tricked up offense. I mean, it's very talented, but man, they are, but the play calling are very dynamic, unlike Dallas, you know. And I don't think really Jared Goff is any more talented than Dak Prescott. Uh, but I do have to give him the edge and put him in, inside the top 10 because he did get to a Super Bowl. Well, a lot of ta- I mean, I understand there's a lot of talent around him, but he was able to do that. And put together, you know, his first year kind of sucked. Everyone thought he was just the biggest bust in the world. Second year, new coach, blows up. Um, and the third year gets to a Super Bowl. And we'll see what he does this next year. But they are looking like... The Super Bowl, the road to the Super Bowl in the NFC is going to run through the Rams. So, and he's he's the quarterback of that team. So I got to put him up there. And at nine, and everyone's going to dispute this, but at nine, I do have Dak Prescott. And for a lot of the things I've said before, um, I don't think he's really that. I don't think he's so untalented like everyone else does. I just think you got a, a team that really, they said, look, teams are having a hard time stopping this run game. So why do we go away from it? It's kind of like in the 90s with Troy Aikman. Uh, you know, no one could stop Emmett Smith. So we don't really need Troy Aikman to throw the ball all over the place. And if you look at it, even though he's, you know, Troy Aikman's in the Hall of Fame, but he's in the Hall of Fame because he's got three rings. You know, he doesn't really have the numbers to get up in there. But... If he was a more selfish player, he could have got those numbers. Everyone thought he could have got those numbers. Now, Dak, I'm willing to bet his numbers can go up if necessary. You know, I think his yards, his touchdown, throwing touchdowns can go up if that's what they need. Now, his interceptions will go up. I mean, that just comes with the territory. You take more chances, more risks, you're going to lose more often. But, you know, to me... Given everything Dak has done, he deserves to be in the top ten. And I, I, I have him in the top ten. I have him number nine. And number ten, I have Deshaun Watson. And I know he puts up monster numbers, way more than Dak. All right? But he doesn't win games like Dak. And he hasn't been able to stay healthy like Dak. Now, his rookie year, you know, I think he played six or seven games, got knocked out. Um, it was better on that front for him last year. And his numbers didn't really drop off dramatically. You know, he was able to sustain big numbers. Uh, He's an exciting quarterback. I like him. I hate his offensive line, though, man. And uh, no Lamar Miller now. (sighs) Man, I feel feel bad for that. He's going to get beat to hell is what's going to happen. And he got beat to hell in, in 2018. And I don't see that changing. But... You know, I hope he can survive it, and I hope they can get an offensive line for him so we can see Deshaun Watson have a long and illustrious career. But, you know, but I have him in my top ten. I think he's that talented. Now that I got you, I got the top ten out there, let's talk about the guys I don't have in the top ten that y'all are all probably yelling about right now. I can't believe. Let me give you the reasons. One by one, Patrick Mahomes. I don't have him in my top ten right now. Why? Because he has one year. Great year. If he has 65% in 2019 like he did in 2018, he'll be in the top 10. He'll be in my top 10. But I'm not going to put a guy with one year of service time in the top 10. You know, I think everyone had RG3 like in the top five after one year. And look what happened. I'm not going to, I don't do that. Let's see it. I got to see another, at least two years to put you in there. Got to have a body of work. I don't have Carson Wentz in the top 10. Why? First year, he was mediocre. 
Second year, he blew up, put up all kinds of numbers. Third year, was down year. He wasn't that good. Dak Prescott beat him twice, swept him. But that's not the whole story, of course. His, his one great year, where he was in the MVP talks. That's what everyone says. He was in the conversation for the MVP. He didn't win it. Big reason he didn't win it, got hurt. Got hurt. His team won the Super Bowl that year without him. And in his second year, or sorry, in his third year, not having as good a year, all right, all his numbers are down. Quite frankly, he was sucking. And he got hurt again, again, and missed the, missed the postseason again. To this day, he still has not played a playoff game. I'm not putting in the top ten. Now, if he has another season like he did two years ago and stays healthy, then he deserves to be in there. And everyone's projecting that he's going to be great this year. You know, if he can play 16 games and play great and play a playoff game or two or three or whatever, then you got to put him in the top. I, I would have to put him in the top 10 at that point. But as of right now, he's not going in there. Mayfield, kind of the same thing with Mahomes. We've only seen him for a partial season. I got to at least see what he does this year. If he puts up the numbers, gets some wins, you know, and all things are good, you know, maybe sneaks the Browns into the playoffs, okay, then legit top 10 candidate. Uh, Matthew Stafford, a lot of people, a lot of, I think almost everybody would have Matthew Stafford well above Dak Prescott. The problem is, is all the empty calories. You know, he'll put, he'll, he'll throw 350, 400 yards and lose the damn game. He's, he's a good quarterback. He's very talented, but it just never translates to winning football. On the other hand, Dak Prescott does not put up near the numbers of Matthew Stafford. He doesn't look as crisp or as, you know, beautiful as a pocket passer as Matt Stafford. However, what he does translates into wins. You could say, well, that's Zeke Elliott. No. No. Running backs do not get you wins. All right, they can help, but they don't get you wins. They can get you wins with an elite defense. We're talking Denver Broncos of a couple years ago. We're talking the Ravens, the 85 Bears, the 02 Tampa Bay Bucks. You know, the real doomsday defense of Dallas years ago. Now, if Dallas becomes the doomsday defense again, then yes, Zeke and that defense can lead you to a championship. But you got to have two things working. A great running back and an elite great defense. Or you can have Dak just raise his game up a little bit. <laughs> it's easier with Dak. It's easier with the quarterback. Dak, for this year, belongs in the top ten. And... You can say, well, by your standards, I mean, you got Mahomes, Wentz, um, Mayfield that can come in and, and take over spots in the top ten next year. Absolutely they can. Uh, maybe Mitch Trubisky. That's four guys that can move into the top ten next year. How about, uh, you know, in a couple of years, you're talking guys like maybe, maybe uh, Haskins or Murray they can move up in there, you know, and then, oh, well, Dak won't be a top 10. Well, hold on. I mean, Tom Brady's in his 40s. Drew Brees is 40. Uh, Big Ben is knocking on 40's door. Phillip Rivers is long in the tooth. That's four guys right there that in two years probably won't be in the league. So four of your top guys are going to be out of the league. And like I said, you already lost Andrew Luck. So, to me, because I didn't have Watson in the top ten, by the way. I had Andrew Luck in there. Watson got in there because of Luck. So, really, I if, if Dak just improves a little bit, I don't see him moving out of the top ten, at least not out of my top ten, for a long time. As far as I'm concerned, pro football focus, all these other sites, you can kiss my ass. You bunch of cowboy haters. And that's all it is. I mean, pro football focus, when they go come out and talk about crap like this, or 
even worse, put Zeke Elliott number eight among all active running backs, have him ranked eighth. Pro Football Focus is a subscription site. You have to pay for a subscription. That's how they make money. So they need they need they need attention. They need clickbait. And that's all these articles are. Saying that the Cowboys should should cut bait with Dak Prescott putting Zeke Elliott number eight. Because they're talking about America's team. This is the most popular team in the NFL. The Dallas Cowboys are the biggest TV show in the history of TV. They're the biggest right now. They're the most popular. Uh, the most wealthy, they're worth the most, they get the most attention, they're the most polarizing team. So if you want attention, you talk about the Dallas Cowboys. And that's what Pro Football Focus did. They came up with two topics. The big one, of course, being Dak Prescott sucks and and the Cowboys shouldn't pay him, they should just cut him. And Zeke being ranked number eighth, those kind of articles gets eyeballs onto their site and gets people to pay for a subscription to what is normally a lot of really good information, great researchers. I mean, Pro Football Focus knows their crap, but they're not above doing things for attention, clickbait. And that's what these are. That's what these articles are. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll be back with some other crap sometime for free. Bye.